So we are finishing this series, The Daily Journey, this morning as we uh, wrap up our study through the book of First Peter. So next Sunday, we will be starting a new series, um, and that series will be, is gonna, going to be titled um, Proceed with Caution. Uh, we're going to be uh, continuing studying of the writings of Peter as we move into Second Peter. So we've gone uh, chapter by chapter through First Peter. Uh, then next week, we'll start that series. And when we end that series, we will start our Christmas series. So uh, believe it or not, again, the Christmas season is right around the corner. And so, um, again, we're, about, we're also looking forward to this holiday season. So as we um, finish this series this morning, I said we started five weeks ago as we started studying the book of First Peter. And so we're going to be first in First Peter chapter 5 this morning. So if you have your Bible with you, please open with me to 1 Peter chapter 5. If you don't have your own Bible, there are Bibles available for you in the seat pockets. And on the top of your outline, you'll see the page numbers there uh, for where you can find these passages um, in that Bible. And so we are looking at 1 Peter chapter 5, it is at the, really the conclusion of this letter. Okay? And we've seen, again, Peter wrote this letter to to believers, to the faith community, um, and just, and in and, and, was encouraging them in their daily journey and saying, now, as, as a believer, you need to walk with Christ daily, right? You've joined the journey. Now take a step forward in your journey every day. Um, and again, we've seen uh, Peter, as we've studied through, we've seen him build this case. He starts off in chapter one, telling us that the foundation of our daily journey is our faith, right? And that our faith is, is at the, the, the core, the foundation of, of, of following Jesus. And so again, if that faith is, is um, compromised or is, is in danger or losing structure, then we see cracks, we see evidences in our life, just like in a house. If the foundation gets compromised, right, we see those evidences. And so he says, strengthen the foundation first. Strengthen your faith every day. And then in chapter 2, he talks about how Christ is the cornerstone of that foundation, right? That he is, therefore, um, the destination of our journey. We are followers of Jesus, right? And he is the cornerstone and our example to follow, as we walk with him every day. And then in chapter three, we saw have the attitude that we take as we walk daily with Jesus and the attitude of I'm third, right? Of going back to the great, the, the great, greatest commandments, right? That Jesus is first, others are second, and we are third, right? And we, we follow that attitude, use that attitude as we walk with Christ every day. And then last week, as he, he turns the corner towards the end of, of, of the, the letter and gets, starts giving us some practical advice, Right, we saw last week how perspective is very important. Right, again, how we can take, we can live out these three things with a, a, with a new perspective as God continues to transform us as believers as we walk with him. And now we get to today, to the final conclusion of this series. And the theme for today, okay, we're looking at, again, we've talked about, uh, again, the foundation of our daily journey is faith, right? That that Christ is the cornerstone, that, that we go through life knowing I'm third. Perspective is incredibly important. And now today is the more I do, the stronger I get. The more I do, the stronger I get. That is our theme for today. As we think about this concept, right? this concept is true in so many areas of life. Okay? It is true physically, right? The more that I do, the stronger I get. If I, if I commit to a workout routine, right? I can't just go to the gym one time, Lift, lift some weights and leave there stronger, right? The more that I do, the stronger I get. Again, I can, I don't know about you, but I've committed to gym before, right? And I show up the first week, I do really good, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm strong, right? And then the next week, I do a little less. And the, the third week, I don't do anything at all. And then a month in, I wonder why I'm not any stronger, right? And yet, but the truth is, the more I do, the stronger I get. That is true physically. It's also true financially, Right? Again, we're in the middle of teaching these financial peace classes. Okay? As I teach these classes and watch these, these families and these couples go through this class right? and learn these concepts of how to handle money. And, and the truth, financially, the more that I do, the stronger I get. I will not find financial peace unless I do the things in the class, unless I continue to do them, unless I budget and, and save and, and get out of debt and, and all those things. Unless I do those things and continue to do them, the more I do them, the stronger I become financially. It's true relationally, right? Is that the more time I spend with somebody, the more that I do it, the closer I get to them, the stronger my relationship becomes. And this concept is true in all these other areas of life, and it is also true spiritually. And that's what Peter's trying to get us to understand, right? Is the more that I do, the stronger I get, 
Right? And as we walk in this daily journey with Christ, the, the more that I walk with him, the stronger my faith becomes. Right? The, the closer to Christ I get, the more that I do it, the stronger I get. And he, he gives us these concepts in a two different pictures. And I, I want to look at, at um, these first two s- sections of chapter 5. This first section, these first four verses, okay, are addressed to, to mature believers, to, to leaders in the church. Okay, and, um, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1, he says, And now, a word to you who are elders in the churches. I too am an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ, and I too will share in his glory when, is, when he is revealed to the whole world. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. Now, as we read these verses... First off, is I, again, the word elder, and it says he's talking to elders. The word that is, that is translated as elder here um, is literally, the literal translation of that Greek word is, is older believer. Okay, is older believer. It's saying it's, he's talking to somebody who has a mature faith. Right, somebody who has walked with Christ for more than a day or more than a year, right? Somebody who says, I'm going on this daily journey. They have been, has reached this um, mature level in their faith. Okay, again, it's, it's not, not even necessarily talking about age. It's not just about, again, um, age does not make you a mature believer, but yet growth in your journey is what makes you a mature believer. And he's looking uh, to them saying, hey, these are some specific directives for you as, as Christian leaders, right? As, as the more mature people in God's family, right? And he gives this general directive uh, in the beginning part of verse 2. And the general directive is to care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Okay, now again, he says, right, and we see again, he makes the assumption that as a mature believer, you have a flock. Right, that you are, again, you are to oversee some people, so take care of a flock to, to guide them. And, and again, this is uh, referencing some sheep, right? He's saying hey, you're a shepherd of some sheep, and you have a flock to take care of. Right now, um, again, he's not just, just, just talking to pastors. He's not just talking to, to vocational ministers. But to, we all have a ministry, if you're a mature believer, which means you have a flock. Again, first and foremost in Scripture, as, as a believer, especially as a parent, we are told to take care of our family first. Okay? And so if you're a believer and you have a family, then that is a part of your flock. Right now, again, as, as your pastor, again, I, my flock is is different than yours, right? But we all have a flock that God has given you. Again, whether that's your family, some coworkers, a specific ministry, right? Uh, uh, maybe just your small group, your small group leader, right? Whatever that would be, we have a flock. We are a mature believer, and we are to care for them, okay? And, and again, this is not specific to church pastors, but to all mature believers. Your flock may look different than mine, but it is no less important. Right? And um, your ministry is different than my ministry, but we all have one. Right? And with that said, he gives us three specific ways to live out this call to care for our flock. Okay, the first one is, in the, the, is in also in verse 2, when he says, let God determine your call. Okay, let God tell you what your flock is, what ministry you're supposed to be doing. Right? But as a mature believer, you have a ministry to do. And says, let God determine that. Right, and then next, once you ask God and God shows you what your role is supposed to be, right, then, um, then he tells us to do it willingly. Okay, don't argue with God about that. Again, I, I don't know about you, but I know for me, I can speak to me as saying, there are times when I knew what God was calling me to do. I knew what flock he was leading me to do, and, and I did not like that idea. Right, and I would argue with God and say, God, are you sure that that's what you want me to do? Okay, again, just as Rock shared, sometimes he's looking at, he, he's saying, please do somebody to do this for these high school kids. And he's like, yeah, you're going to do it. I, and he's like, I don't think I can do that. Right? But yet, Rock gave in, and he's done it willingly. Right? Again, it was, we, he says to do it willingly when you know that call. Right? Like God determine the call, and then do it willingly. And then in verse 3, he tells us, then as you do that, lead by example. Right? Lead by example. Just as we've, uh, as followers, as mature believers, we are following Jesus, right? Then lead your flock in the same way as, as again, point them to Jesus. Lead by example in that way. 
And, and, and throughout Scripture, I, again, it shows that as mature believers, as teachers in the church, as, as leaders in the church, that we are held to a higher standard. Okay? And, um, and that is true. We see that in James 3.1. One of the places says, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. You know, we are held accountable to our knowledge and to the, the things, that, the responsibility that God has given us. Okay? And, and in that, again, we, and basically all that to say is we need to take it seriously. Right? And, and Peter is saying, hey, as mature believers, take your flock seriously. Right? Do it with everything you have. Right? And the result of doing that right, is that there will be a reward for faithful leadership. Right? And he tells us that in verse 4. Right? If you are faithful to what God has called you to care for your flock, then there is a reward for faithful leadership. Okay, and then he continues on in this letter in these next verses, verses 5 through 11, okay, where then he moves on from specific leaders and moves on to, de- to the entire faith community. Okay, and, and picking up in verse 5. Okay, he says, In the same way, you younger men must accept the authority of the elders, and all of you serve each other in humility. For God opposes the proud, but favors the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he'll lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert and watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. So as we read those verses again, this advice is given to the, to the whole church, okay, to the entire faith community. Uh, and, and he gives us these two general directives in verse 5. Okay, he says, one, the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. Again, he's not speaking to age specifically, but in maturity level of your faith. Okay, and when you are further along in the journey, then uh, if you are just, just beginning your journey, right, is accept the authority of those that are further down the journey than you. Okay, and then, he, so that's the first directive, right, is to, is to accept the authority of the, the, the more mature believers. And then he also then says to serve one another in humility, right? And that is a big step of our faith journey is to serve, right? Is to start contributing, to move from just consuming to contributing to God's family. And as we see that, then he again um, gives us four specific ways to live that out in the following verses. And the first one is this, is we then must humble ourselves to God. And again, general directive is humble yourselves to each other and the authority within God's God's family, but then this one is specifically to humble ourselves to God, right? Again, and this is to everybody. This is to mature believers, to, to ones that are just joining the journey, of saying to, to humble yourself to God, because no matter where we are and no matter what our role is, whether we're the pastor or we're somewhere else, right, is that we are all accountable to God, right? And that he is the destination of our journey, right? He is who we are focused on. And so humble ourselves to God, and then the result, if we do that, is that God will lift you up at the right time. Right? God will lift you up at the right time, according to his season and to his wisdom. Right? Again, and, and I don't know about you, but I can look back at my life. Sometimes I need humbled longer than others. Right? There is not necessarily a specific timeline to that, but he says, but you will be lifted up by God if you humble yourself before him. Right? When it's right. Right? When you're ready for that. Okay, step two. Okay, as he tells us to give all of our worries and our cares to God. Okay, give your worries and cares to God. And if we're able to do that, then the result, right, is the fact that we will be cared for. Okay, and again, this journey is not always easy, but he says continue on. Give your, your, your worries and your cares to God, and, and you will be cared for by the Holy Spirit. Right, and then step three, okay, as he says to stay alert, Stay alert because he says, hey, you signed up to fight in a war, right? There is an enemy out there. The real enemy, again, is not the church, is not even the world culture, but the real enemy is Satan and evil, 
right? And, and be alert to that. Know that that's out there, right? And you alert to it. As you continue to journey with me, you realize, right, that, that there is an enemy and that if I don't, if I'm not alert to that, I will be devoured, right? Is that I will just be target practice for the enemy and I will no longer just be target practice. I will fight back, right? And I fight back with God and his power and that starts by being alert, right? Because then the result of me being alert is I will not be devoured, right? I will no longer be target practice for the enemy, right? That, that I will take new ground for God every day as I walk with him, right? As I'm alert, right, to the lion that's prowling around, right? And then step four is to stand firm and be strong in your faith, right? And he goes back to where he started in chapter one, right? Which is your faith is the foundation of your daily journey, right? And stand firm and be strong and be strengthened every day as you walk with Jesus, right? And the result of standing firm is we will be encouraged knowing we're not alone, right? Knowing that as we walk in this daily journey that there, again, we're not alone. We're going through this together with other believers, right? It's saying that there are other people, other churches, and the God's bigger picture church, right, that are going through the same thing as you and be encouraged because you're not alone, right? God is with you and others are with you. Right, and, and as we see that, then he, he concludes then these steps in verses 10 and 11, okay, where he tells us, he says that it's, it's in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you suffer for a little while, he will restore support and strengthen you. He will place you on a firm foundation and all power to him forever. Right, again, what is that foundation? That foundation is our faith. Right? And the more we do it, the stronger we get. Right? The more that I walk with Christ, the stronger I get. And he's saying, continue on in your daily journey. Right? Keep going. Okay? And then he does, in this last section, he tells us straight out why he wrote this letter. Okay? And, um, right? and again, the more you experience daily journey with God, the stronger your faith becomes. And then the conclusion, right, as he tells us the purpose of him writing. He says, the purpose of writing is to encourage you and to assure you that what you are experiencing is truly part of God's grace for you. So stand firm in his grace. Right, and he's telling us, right, how are we saved? We are saved through grace. Right, we join the journey through God's grace. And he says, when you are once you've joined the journey, you receive Christ your Savior, then you start journeying towards him every day. And he is encouraging us and assuring us that we are on the right journey. He said, you are headed in the right direction. Keep going. Stand firm in God's grace, right? And take that next step. You are doing the right thing. Continue on every day because the foundation of your daily journey is faith. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone and therefore the destination of my journey and my example to follow. Right, I journey through life with the attitude that I'm third, realizing that my perspective is a very powerful thing. And the more that I do, the stronger I get. And as we realize this, then we come then to our final thought from not just today, but for this series. And that is this. Other than your salvation experience, the daily journey is the most important aspect of your faith. And the best way to praise and worship God is to take the next step in your journey. Again, maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you have not joined the journey yet. Maybe you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. And if that's true, then I invite you today to open your heart and life, invite him in, receive him as your Savior, join the journey today. But again, whether you are a new believer or a mature believer, take the next step in your journey because outside of your salvation experience, Right? Your daily journey is the most important thing to strengthen your faith. So I hope that this morning, again, you will take that next step. This next week, you'll take that next step, whatever that would be. And so as our worship team comes up, as we spend a few more moments in worship together before we leave, before we are launched into our mission field, okay, then I, uh, I hope that we will, again, one, ask God, what is the next step in my journey? And we'll get, gain the encouragement to take that next step this next week. Lord God, we praise you this morning. Lord, as the beautiful one that saves us. God, as the beautiful one that walks with us in our daily journey. 
And God, I pray that you will help us, Lord, this week, Lord, to take care of the flock you've entrusted to us. God, no matter what that flock is, Lord, help us as believers, God, to, to care for that flock. Lord, I pray that as we leave here, God, we will continue to shine your light in this dark world. God, that we would be launched into our mission field. And God, through truck or treat this week, Lord, through our jobs, our families, our neighbors, through everything, everyone we come in contact with this week, Lord, may we share your love with them. God, we praise you for saving us through your grace. God, we thank you for walking with us as we strengthen our faith every day. God, guide us as we take that next step. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.